The date was the 17th of May 2013, roughly 3,000 sols, or Martian days, since the Opportunity rover had landed on Mars, and it had just made the most important discovery of its entire mission. After kilometers of traveling, it came to the edge of the biggest crater of the mission, and along this rim, it found a vein in the ground which scientists named Esperance. This vein confirmed that a large body of water was, at one point in the distant past, present on the Martian surface. Esperance was a hydrated rock, or a clay, which can only be formed while under a body of water for a significant period of time. Opportunity had discovered clues that water existed on Mars in the past, but until this point it had only found evidence of flooding events. However, Esperance was likely to be proof of a past ocean. I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum, and in this sixth video in the Opportunity series, we will follow the rover's tracks beyond Esperance and find out what it saw and discovered around its winter lodgings at Salander Point. Even though this huge discovery had been made, Opportunity still had a lot ahead of it. Mission controllers wanted more evidence of water, and they had their sights set on Salander Point, about 1.5 kilometers further south from Esperance. Martian winter was starting to come around again, which brings with it a reduction in sunlight, from the length of the day to the angle of the sun in the sky. To maximize the generation of power for the little rover, Salander Point was chosen as it's a north-facing slope, meaning as Opportunity explores the area, its solar panels would be angled towards the sun too. It was also believed to contain more evidence of hydrated minerals and exposed layering in the rocks, as spotted by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. 1.5 kilometers doesn't seem so far away, but Opportunity was a slow rover with a top speed of only 2 centimeters a second and it often travelled half that just to be safe. Scientists didn't want it to crash into rocks or get stuck in sand dunes, so Opportunity would move forward a bit, look around for hazards, and repeat the process. Along the way, the floor underneath Opportunity looked very peculiar. It was primarily large chunks of rocks, smoothed off at the top with sand and dust filling the gaps, almost like a random mosaic. Flat rocky ground is the ideal terrain for Opportunity, so it made good progress on the way to Slander Point. Much like the rest of the mission, blueberries were spotted again, rounded rocks a centimeter or two across. By Sol 3390, Opportunity made it to its winter lodgings and began work on the slope. Even while working here, energy production was very low, hitting only 270 watt hours per day. Any lower than that, and the rover would have gone into a type of hibernation mode. This was due to the Martian winter, but also because dust had been settling on the rover's solar panels, and there hadn't been a cleaning event for a while. This low power mode meant the work around Salander Point was slow, and it wasn't until Sol 3530 that a cleaning event finally pushed energy production up to 370 watt hours per day. Cleaning events occur when wind blows extremely fine dust off the panels. Because Mars is so arid, there's nothing adhesive about the dust. So even though Mars's atmosphere is so thin, these dust particles can be easily blown off. A bit like blowing dust off the cover of a book. Dust settles on the rover over time, especially during the massive dust storms that are so big they can be seen from space. Around Sol 3519, Opportunity spent the day examining a surface target. However, embarrassingly, the mesh they used to calculate the distances of objects to the rover was wrong, meaning the instruments on the arm were off by about 5 centimeters. So the images taken were blurry, and the alpha particle X-ray spectrometer couldn't properly detect what it was looking at. This was quickly rectified, and the usual crisp images started coming back to mission control again. A bizarre discovery that was noticed just a few sols later was something known as Pinnacle Island. Opportunity often took days to examine certain patches of ground, but scientists noticed some variation between one photo and another taken a few days later. This rock seems to have appeared out of nowhere. 
Mission controllers weren't so impressed though, putting it down to a nearby meteorite impact, or even opportunity bumping the rock into place with one of its wheels. A flyby of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter revealed no fresh impact, so that discounted that theory, but Mission Controller sent Opportunity on its merry way without investigating the rock further. This caused outrage online, with people suspecting aliens left the rock there as a means of communicating with us on Earth, or that it was a type of fungus that had grown over the 12 days between photos. Some people even went to the lengths of suing NASA over their reluctance to investigate Pinnacle Island further by imaging it with the microscopic camera on board Opportunity's arm. However, before that really got going, as Opportunity looked back on Pinnacle Island, the mystery was solved. Opportunity had indeed cracked a rock in half, as can be seen by the tracks left in the sand. As far as we are aware, this is the first time something like this has happened on its whole mission, but the chances of it occurring were likely increased as Opportunity's arm was getting less and less mobile through wear and tear. This means that the rover itself now has to turn in order for the arm to reach specific objects, instead of the arm simply reaching across. Another problem that was becoming more and more persistent for Opportunity was the onboard computer randomly resetting. Although Opportunity was always able to turn back on, each reset wasted about a day's worth of science activities. By Sol 3749, these resets caused about half the month to be missed. Mission controllers narrowed the problem down to the onboard flash memory. Flash memory can get temperamental after repeated use, heightening the risk of losing new photos before they can be sent back to Earth, and so the decision was made to reformat the entire drive. This would not only clear the storage, but also identify any bad cells within the drive, so those cells can be avoided in the future. By Sol 3773, the reformatting was completed successfully. Soon thereafter, Opportunity reached Bodoviak Ridge, south of Salander Point. As this was going on, a visitor from the outer edges of the solar system was hurtling towards Mars. Its trajectory would take it just 130,000 kilometers above the planet's surface before it continued on towards the Sun. This visitor was again not an alien, but Comet Siding Spring, a visitor from the Oort Cloud. The Oort Cloud is found well beyond Neptune and the Kuiper Belt, millions of icy rocks in orbits that take millions of years to complete. Because it had such a long time to accelerate towards the Sun from the furthest point in its orbit, the trip from Mars to the closest approach to the Sun only took 6 days. That's 56 kilometers per second. However, because of the close flyby of Mars, it meant that the spacecraft on and around Mars were actually in a better spot to witness Comet Siding Spring than we were on Earth. Mission controllers of the various missions were also a bit nervous about the dust particles that are ejected from the comet travelling at that speed, potentially impacting and damaging spacecraft in orbit around Mars. As such, Hubble, as well as spacecraft around Mars, all began observations of this visitor. Fortunately, mission controllers had already had some practice at this with Comet Ison, another comet that passed by Mars only the year previously. Comet Ison, however, was 80 times further away than Siding Spring would be, too far and too dim for opportunity to spot. And unfortunately, it was day just as Siding Spring made its closest approach to Mars, but opportunity was able to snap a couple of photos of it just before dawn. Can you spot it? Here's the annotated version of the same image. As it passed by, none of the spacecraft were damaged by ejected dust particles, but what they did observe from this flyby was completely unexpected. As it passed by, it plunged Mars's weak magnetic field into chaos, albeit temporarily. Unlike Earth, Mars doesn't have a magnetic field generated from within its core, its magnetic field comes from plasma high up in its atmosphere, which generates a very weak charge. This is enough to deflect solar wind coming from the sun, but solar storms from CMEs and solar flares push past this induced magnetic field, stripping away atoms from the atmosphere. Comet Siding Spring had a very similar effect on Mars. 
Comets are also surrounded by a magnetic field, again induced from interactions with solar wind, this time with the comet's atmosphere, or coma. A comet's coma can reach out for millions of kilometers from the comet, meaning that as sightings spring past Mars, Mars was enveloped in its coma for a good few hours. This merged both magnetic fields for the duration of the event, with charged particles from both objects interacting strongly with each other, and the atmosphere of Mars actually lost some particles to space as a result. However, apart from the image Opportunity was able to take from the surface, all this went largely unnoticed by the rover. 2015 was quickly approaching, and Opportunity was heading for Marathon Valley, which would take the odometer reading of Opportunity to the distance of a typical marathon. But we will have to save that for next time. Thanks for watching. If you are just joining us, be sure to watch the playlist here for the previous episodes in this series. A big thanks as always to my patrons and members that support the channel. If you would like to support too, find the links in the description. Another way to support is by checking out TransferWise using my affiliate link below. TransferWise is a great and cheap means of sending money abroad or having a bank account in multiple currencies. It's a lot cheaper than traditional banks, so I use TransferWise all the time. And with that, all the best and see you next time.